Well, good morning to you, everyone. How are you guys? How's everyone there at home? Really good to be together. Well, wonderful to be together in worship and in spirit, unity together for the purpose of one, one thing, and that is to glorify our Lord Jesus Christ. We're going to um, continue this morning on the conversation that we had from last Sunday, continuing that focus on scatter to gather. And actually, it's kind of turning into a series. We'll at least take this month of July to, to continue in, in this theme, um, as we talked about and started last Sunday. The purpose and the reason for this sermon series is simply taking what God has been teaching us, the truths that he's been teaching us through the Acts of the Holy Spirit, that sermon series as we journey through the book of Acts, and highlighting and reviewing and taking those truths of, of God and using them to seek the Father for his purpose and his will together as a church family for this transition that we're stepping into, which was the focus of last week's sermon. And if you missed that, of course, you can catch up there on our podcast. We have them available both in video and audio now. So please listen to that if you missed it. It's going to lay down some foundations for um, what we're going to be building on today. Gatherings. That's, this is the, the focus for um, our, our talk and our message this morning, the word gatherings. I'm going to really focus on what this means on a practical level and, and as we build and, and, and move forward from here as, as a body of believers. I'm going to read from today's Bible quote, which we looked at last week, Hebrews chapter 10, verse 25, but I'm going to read from a different English translation called the Passion Translation. When I read this, it, it seemed to capture the heart of today's message, so let me read that for us. This is not the time to pull away and neglect meeting together, as some have formed the habit of doing, because we need each other. In fact, we should come together even more frequently, eager to encourage and urge each other onward as we anticipate that day dawning. I thought that captured it really well. This is not the time to pull away and neglect meeting together, as some have formed the habit of doing. And this is an easy habit, right? To, to, to not meet together is an easy habit habit to do. But here's the reason. We need each other. We really need to encourage each other, um, urge each other towards onward as we anticipate that day dawning. That means the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Up until real recently, um, before we had this, this place to congregate at GSIS um, here in the summer months, we had the blessing of live stream services, right? From around end of February till, till June, we were able to meet together, not physically, but through live stream online in our single homes. And that has been really, really great. It's been a blessing because otherwise it would have been very difficult for us to, to continue forward. Um, that is going to, again, like I mentioned before, we're going to continue that forward through into the future indefinitely, if not just build more upon it. However, what this new transition that we're stepping into is going to build upon what we've been doing now, and that's the word gatherings that we're, we're talking about. And, and so gatherings in the way that I'm using it in this, in this particular way of the plan in the future is basically multiple meeting locations 
where we as a church, even though we're scattered in, into Suwon and beyond, are united together in these meeting places, small, smaller meeting places, okay? smaller gatherings. These gatherings in multiple locations can be homes. They can be um, offices. Some of you guys might have office spaces. Sometimes apartment complexes have shared areas where you can rent that out and, and meet together or other places for hire or anything else. And this is really a place of creativity, not out of the box thinking. So even though we're apart, right, we're actually united together, meeting together. This is what we're talking about as a gathering. So this is different than, say, single households where families are looking and watching the live stream together or individuals in their own homes watching the live stream again all together. It's doing that same activity on a given Sunday, for example, but you're either inviting people into your space to do that same activity or purposefully going to a, a gathering, an official gathering to do this together. So this is what I'm speaking about as in the word gathering. Those scattered were together. And I'm going to share a little bit of why and the, and the purpose to this in a little bit. But first I want to address the, maybe the elephant in the room. We, we say that in saying, you know, um, the unspoken things that everybody's thinking. Um, as you probably are aware, if you're not, there has been a ban on <laughs> small gatherings yeah, for churches in, ter in terms of Bible studies, um, practices, prayer groups, all of those things. This could not have come at a more interesting time because <laughs> the, 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 this was in the media early in, from that last week on, on Monday, correct? And this was the message that was on my heart for this Sunday. Interesting. So it was heavy. It was a heavy thing that I took to the Father. And I conversed with him, laid this before him, and God penetrated my heart with a word from Scripture, and that's from Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. And it says, it says this, But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. What God was really working in my heart that I want to share with you in light of everything that's happening right now, is that the kingdom of God is the kingdom that we serve. And in the kingdom of God, there is one ruler, one king, one person who reigns, and that is our Father in heaven. He's our king. He's the one that we serve and we follow. And in this world... Listen to this. In this world, I would say majority of time, if not 100% of the time, if you have a comparison column of God's kingdom on one side of the column and on the other side of the column, whatever the world thinks is important, the world is going to value the thing on this side of the column over what's on this side of the column, over God's kingdom. Okay? So let's put some things in there. So basically, restaurants <laughs> on this side of the column versus God's kingdom. Well, restaurants is going to be more important. Okay? Stores, these are all important things, are more important. Cafes are more important. Yep. Coupon. <laughs> God's kingdom versus coupon. Now it's getting hard? No. But that's more important. Yep. Call centers, more important. Conferences, more important. So if you, if you take the world and you, you come to these two columns, the world will always place value in this column over the kingdom of God. Is that true? It's not going to see the kingdom of God as the most important thing. Because we're told 
in Scripture, the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. It's just, this, this, is, not, this is not valuable. This is not a priority. Those may be easy black and white things to look at, but here's where it gets even harder for followers of Jesus Christ, even for us as those who follow Jesus. So we got God's kingdom on one column, and how about let's put health on another column? Ooh, now it gets a little bit more difficult. <laughs> so what's more important? Let's put another one, security, safety. Okay, now, it's, now this is really getting hard. Family, <laughs> right? Earthly freedom. This is where it's getting a bit challenging. However, it doesn't mean it's not clear. As we go through the book of Acts, we will see, and we have seen, excuse me, we have seen that the disciples of Jesus Christ have considered their own safety as less important, their own protection is less important, their reputation is less important to the gospel of Jesus Christ, to the expansion of the kingdom of God. That's what we got to see again and again and again. In this, the prayer notes for the upper room this last Wednesday, if you haven't joined an upper room I can't say it and can't emphasize it enough. Please join one because this is where God is really speaking into our hearts individually and us as a church together. In this last upper room, the notes talked about in Acts chapter 7 how the, um, the disciple Stephen considered and cared about the kingdom of God more than he did his own protection. Paul, the Apostle Paul, same. In fact, all of Acts you will see that every single disciple and follower of Jesus Christ considered the kingdom of God more important than anything else that we deem as important, but is the most important. And I believe this is a place where we're going to have to really take into consideration because here's the thing. If we as the church agree with the same value system as the world, then the church is in trouble. If we as the church say, yes, these other things in this column is more important than that of the kingdom of God, then the church will not be the light of the world. The church will not be the, the very body of Jesus Christ moving in these places of darkness, in these lives of people who are lost to bring the life of Jesus, the love of God, to them. We don't advance, we, we shrink back. And, and so this is, this is so important, I believe, for each and every believer and follower of Jesus Christ to consider. Is to say, will you, are you going to believe what the world puts as a value? Or will you believe that the kingdom of God is first and you will seek that first? and his righteousness. Because all of these other things that we do worry about, health, what we're going to wear, what's going to happen, all of these things, well, the promise is God is going to add that to us. That's trusting him as our king, as our provider. And I'm not saying these things lightly. I've had to wrestle with these things personally for several, several weeks. Because the stakes are high in terms of this topic of gathering together, <laughs> the stakes are actually high, and I recognize that. It's not only about a health risk. People, the stakes could include people's jobs, I understand. It could ris risk other family members' 
careers or they could risk their own health. They could risk a lot of things, shame, bad reputation, all of these things. I understand that. There's a, there's a whole list of things that we need to consider. And so what I'm going to ask you there at home and here as we're here in the in-person service at GSIS is that you take what we're, we're speaking about, what God is bringing to us here in this time of transition, bring your concerns and only proceed if God brings his peace in place of his concerns because it cannot be something you do with a sense of pressure. It must be by the conviction and inspiration of God's Holy Spirit. But here's the thing. For, for, for us, I, I'm, I'm saying this on behalf of the leadership, on behalf of us as a, as a church, we're going to move in this direction regardless of the, the surrounding events that's happening in the world around us. Because we're no longer going to be reactive, we're going to be directive. Okay? We're, we're going to be this, we're going to set our sail and our rudder to go the direction that God has for us, regardless of where the wind blows or how the waves move. Okay? It's going to be intentional and it's going to be committed and it's going to, yep, the, if you're in a sea on a boat, it can be stormy, but as long as you hold that sail, you know the direction you're going, then it may zigzag, <laughs> you may have to adapt, it may not be the straightest line forward, but you are going in that direction, and that is what I'm putting before us this morning and on forward. So no, no more of reacting but truly stepping forward. And this will require, yeah, not only faith, but truly a, a conviction of, of God that this is where he has us go. And here's the thing. I don't know what's on that other side. All I know is in the goodness of God, and I trust in the goodness of God. Yeah. And, and so that is what we need to be seeking forward. So, that is what I want to lay before you. I believe that's my responsibility to put that before you. And your responsibility is to pray and consider this in prayer and respond accordingly. Yeah. So, but for all of God's people, I really want to put this out there and say you have to make a decision. What is more important? What will you value? The things that God has said in his, in his word and about his kingdom or the things that the world says is of importance because they're going to be in opposition. They will always be in opposition. In times of peace, in times when everything is okay, it, we don't feel it. <laughs> but when things get tough, when we're hit with very serious issues like we're now, well, then it comes where everything surfaces of what we believe is important. That's where it comes out. Yeah. That's when that squeeze happens, that's where we have to make our decisions. And for us, I believe God is bringing us, I sense in my spirit that he's making, he's making a way for us to step into these places where we gather together intentionally as we are maybe scattered throughout the city but united together in the spirit. So I'm going to share with you this, the, 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 the vision and the purpose of these gatherings. The purpose is to simply meet, and I'm using meet as an acronym, M-E-E-T, to hopefully help us be able to remember the purpose and vision of the future gatherings. And let me say this, in my human plan, I don't know this in God's plan, I'm still seeking him, my human plan is I believe this is a temporary thing. I believe this is that, that, that wilderness of journey towards the, 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 the promise that God has on the other end. That, that's my sense. I, I believe this is an interim to where 
that there is a place we're going to be able to gather again as a whole. And in fact, we're, we're looking into those things from a long-term perspective as well as a short-term possibilities of, of areas and locations where we can come together for prayer, for worship together, and, and so be praying about that. Um, our one time marker that we have that's just a practical thing is um, our church office is, is leases up in, in May of next year. And that's where a lot of our, you know, key money is in. Um, so that's, that's a human plan right now. And as you know, the Bible tells us that man makes his plans, but God is the one who determines our steps. Well, let's pray continually that we see God's ordained steps so we can walk in them. But I'm just sharing with you some of those plans that we have. But I believe just as the wilderness was an absolute crucial time for the Israelites to walk in, this is also a very critical time for us as well. Do you know what the, what the purpose of the wilderness was? Was to trust in God, was to build their faith in God. When they had no source of food, when there was no water to be found, when this heat was upon them, when they only had one set of clothes, when they were walking and walking. Do you see that there was nothing, but really they had everything? Right? In an earthly sense, there was nothing, but really they had everything because God was their provider and their leader, and he displayed that amongst them. Well, as to say, we believe in God. He's our leader. We trust him. And I believe that this is a time where it builds us in our trust in him. I believe that's an important time period as we move forward. We trust in the plans that he has for us, even though we go into unfamiliar and uncertain times. The purpose is to meet. So M, M would be to multiply the church. That's the most important one, to multiply the church. From a place of single gathering to a place of multiple gatherings. So multiplying it into different places. As we saw last week also in Acts chapter 8 verse 4, but the believers who were scattered preached the good news about Jesus wherever they went. Yeah, so it is to bring a, a, a greater number, even though we're smaller in number in these multiple locations, in these multiple gatherings, to actually multiply us to reach places and people that we could not necessarily do so by being here as we are. It's great that we have an open, well... I can't say that anymore, but we, we kind of have an open door for anyone to come in by invitation and through the, the, through the online reservation process. But on a traditional sense, being a church that has an open door and allowing people to come, that's a great thing. But there's also some limitations to that. In fact, if you compare that from actually us going out to reach people, there is there's some incredible advantages and we see that in the book of Acts, as God purposely allowed for the scattering, they were able to reach and, and cross boundaries where they weren't able to cross before into the lives of people. And that's the purpose, really, of this. And, and so we see later in the book of Acts, in chapter 11, verse 21, it said, And the hand of the Lord was with them. Those believers scattered everywhere, and a large number who believed turned to the Lord. And that's the purpose. So multiplication by simply, yes, in, in one sense, we become, instead of just one here, purposefully many out there. But multiplying, of course, with the, with the, with the, the mission to bring others into that relationship with Jesus Christ. So engaging our neighbors, Right? really do an active, intentional way of inviting people into these smaller gatherings so they get a chance to experience the love of God that is happening right between those who are meeting together and hearing the word of truth with God's love. So multiply the church. 
The second one is E, exercise spiritual gifts. It's another purpose for us to gather together and for us to meet is to exercise spiritual gifts. God has given each believer a gift from the Holy Spirit. The Spirit of God distributes gifts to each member of the body of Jesus Christ for one purpose, which is to bring the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ to the lost and to the world that need to hear it. And we work together all differently, but together for that single purpose and mission that God has given to us. And But here's, here's one of the advantages of getting smaller. The chances of every single person exercising their spiritual gift goes much higher. And a larger group and a larger gathering, unfortunately, one of the challenges is, is that we have a, a number of people who are simply spectating, watching, kind of a part in terms of Sunday services, but really not being an active member of the body of Jesus Christ. So that's a constant prayer, that's a constant seeking of God of how do we engage people in this way. Well, if you only have a few people coming together, the exercising of the spiritual gift in you goes much, much higher because we need you. <laughs> we need you to be a part of what is happening within these gatherings. Some of these spiritual gifts are very, very applicable to what we're talking about. The gift of hospitality, the gift of helps, the gift of mercy, the gift of teaching, shepherding, prophecy, gift of healing, yeah? gift of administration. There's, there's so many gifts that the Spirit of God has distributed out to his believers that we're meant to use this in accordance together. And here's the thing, you need to not only know what it is and discover what that is, but you need to exercise it and practice it. This is what the Apostle Paul wrote to his beloved Timothy. Yeah, in the first letter he wrote to him, 1 Timothy chapter 4, starting in verse 14, don't neglect the gift that is in you. It was given to you. Through prophecy and the laying on of hands by the council of the elders, practice these things. Be committed to them so that your progress may be evident to all. Pay close attention to your life and your teaching. Persevere in these things, for in doing this, you will save both yourself and your hearers. So let me just summarize that. Don't neglect the gift that is in you. Don't neglect it. In fact, practice these things. Be committed to them. Progress in them. That, that's what practicing does. Yeah, that's what practicing does. I, I've, I've, before doing what I'm doing now, I've really never did sermons. <laughs> that, that's not something I ever saw doing in my mind. But recognizing God has gifted, and it's not mine, he's gifted me with the gift of teaching. And so if, maybe if you watch my first ones, you'd be like, oh, well, that's not very good. <laughs> but I got the chance to practice week after week after week after week after week. And hopefully, I'm getting a little bit better. Hopefully, there's a little progress. But that's not the point. The point is not performance. Here's the point. The point is so that for in doing this, you will save both yourself and your hearers, that you get to experience the safety that is in God and become the human agent of salvation to the people around you. That is the purpose of exercising your gift. Yeah? And, and so that is the call, and that's part of the advantage of being able to come together in these gatherings so we can express 
the Spirit of God uniquely in the way that he is given to us. For 2 Timothy, the Apostle Paul writes again to Timothy again in the second letter, "For for this reason I remind you to fan into flame the gift of God which is in you. Now, this gift that is in us, we, we need to rekindle it if it hasn't been kindled, if it's just been kind of in dormancy. We need to rekindle it. We need to fan it into flame. And I believe these are places of great opportunity that we as a whole church family can start to practice, be committed, and progress in these things. So multiply the church Express spiritual gifts. And the next one is to encourage one another. Let me read our Bible quote again from Hebrews 10, verse 25. This is not the time to pull away and neglect meeting together as some have been in the habit or some have formed the habit of doing because we need each other. In fact, we should come together even more frequently, eager to encourage and urge each other Onward as we anticipate that day dawning. There are many of us, if not all of us, that needs encouragement. (laughs) Are you finding yourself in a place where you need encouragement? That doesn't make you weird. That makes you incredibly normal. In fact, we are told to purposefully encourage one another. And I believe one of the reasons for not fellowshipping together and the more that if we this becomes a habit, those who need desperate encouragement are going to struggle and struggle and struggle even more. God purposefully put us together so that we can encourage each other in the Lord. To exhort each other to pray for one another. In fact, this goes beyond just encouraging one another. This part of the vision is to obey all the one another's that the New Testament commands us to obey. You know how many of those there are? There are about a hundred of them. (laughs) Oh, they occur a hundred times at least. Love one another. Pray for one another. Confess your sins and faults for one another. Forgive one another. Submit to one another. Exhort one another. Bear one another's burdens. Accept one another. There's just so many. That's what we're called to do. And and, and Jesus said that by this, all people will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. So when we obey these one another's that the, the word of God commands us to do, it does something. It provides an powerful testimony that we follow Jesus. And if you follow him too, this is what you get to experience that you're missing and you have that void that you've been longing for, which is the very love of God that we have been designed for, this is the answer. And when you follow Jesus as we're following Jesus, this is yours. So they know that we are his disciples by the way we love one another. To encourage one another, love one another, to pray for one another. I, I know, I know because I've heard it. There are those of you who are listening even at home. I know that you're, there's, there, there are you who are struggling because you haven't been able to meet together. Because we haven't been gathering together. And the isolation is happening. And let's continue to meet online. Let's continue to do do those things. But there is a complete difference in what God is calling us into in terms of scatter to gather, to not neglect meeting together and gathering together that allows for this encouragement to praying, to, to exhort that can happen as we meet 
together. Yeah. So, the purpose is to meet, multiply the church, exercise our spiritual gifts, encourage one another, and lastly, T, to train up disciple makers. To train up disciple makers. So that is, again, the vision and purpose of these gatherings, is to train up disciple makers. It is our single most important mission of why we exist as a church, of why Jesus didn't take us up right into heaven the moment we believed him, in him and put our trust in him, that we, why he's, he's put us on this earth is to accomplish what he, he gave to his followers, his disciples in Matthew chapter 28, 19 through 20. And he, this is what he said, Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. That is the mission that he's given to us. That's why we exist here on earth. That's why we have this really short lifespan of however many years, 100 years, if, you, if you're really blessed. I don't know if that's a blessing or if that's not, but yeah, very short earthly life before we live forever with Jesus in heaven. That's the purpose. And how do we do that? Well, Jesus tells us. He says, teach them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. So how do we go accomplish this mission? We teach each other what Jesus has told us to obey all the commands that he's taught us. And then as we are teaching and those who are learning and responding to that, that's how we become disciple makers. Not just simply disciples, but actual disciple makers. Because that's really our calling, is to make disciples of all nations. To train up disciple makers. Jesus said to his disciples in Acts chapter 1, 8, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and all of Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Did you know the reason that God given, has given us the Holy Spirit is to be his witnesses? That is the primary reason that God has given to you and me the gift of his Holy Spirit to dwell within me, the very empowering presence of Jesus Christ that lives and dwells so that I can be a living witness to the ends of the earth. You're, the Holy Spirit is not given to you as a helper to help you do your will but to do God's will. There's a big difference. The Spirit of God has been given to us as a helper, the Bible says, to help us do the very will of God and not just simply accomplish your agenda. In fact, he won't. He won't help you do your will if it's not Yielded to the very will of God. When you ye yield your will to the will of God, then the Father's will and your will, they become one. They're the same. So you can say, my will is his will, his will is my will. But that is the purpose of the Holy Spirit. So we train up disciples to make disciples. And I believe that is one of the primary reasons for these gatherings is to train up disciple makers and one of the foundations of how God has established the nation's church specifically is this raising up of our next generation of children and young people did you know about half of our church population are children and young people when I share that with other pastors and other people who ministry, they praise God. <laughs> it's a miracle. That's incredible. 
It, it seems like it should be normal. It's probably very normal for us, but that is something that we need to open our eyes to and not neglect. And that's why we have worked very hard and the children's ministers have worked so hard in providing these lessons through video because this is going to start to help with what we're about to establish in these gatherings together. Yeah, And so in one of our prayer meetings, God spoke through, inspired one of those one of our members who were praying, and he's, he brought these words of Jesus to us. Jesus said, let the little children come to me, and do not hinder them, for the kingdom of heaven belongs to such as these. So part of the reason for these gatherings is that we're going to prioritize the raising of the next generation to become disciple makers. And not, it's not just going to be the, in, in this scenario, in this kind of context where we're all meeting and see small gatherings in multiple places. You can't just have a children's minister. <laughs> we all become those who help in training these disciple makers. We become that uncle, we become that sister, we become that spiritual father and mother to one another in raising up this next generation. Is, is it no wonder to you that our children are growing up in some unprecedented times right now and they're watching what we are doing and what choices we are making, where we're putting our trust and where our faith is? Because what you put your trust in, what you are doing, and what you're putting your faith right now, they are watching, and those are seeds being planted of how they're going to exercise their faith in God. Where you place your value, which column that you're placing your value, is what they're going to be learning by osmosis, because that's what children do. And so I'm saying, and I'm calling to us to say, let's be intentional in raising our next generation of disciple makers to become those who make disciples of all the nations. So that is, in, in summary, the vision and purpose for the gatherings that may be multiple and scattered together, but yet completely united. And where we're going to have um, these, these gatherings in a ways that we're going to format them, and I'll share this in, in the weeks to come, the specifics of the format, but they're going to be things that we're going to be doing together, even though we're in different locations. Okay, So we're going to be doing them together, though we are in different locations, but... I recognize that there are situations, and again, please don't feel pressure around this. I just ask that you take concerns and take them to the, to the presence of the Father, because I know there are situations where this is not going to be possible. So if all you can do is still just join and connect by live stream, of course, that's great. But this, I believe, is the steps that we're moving towards. So the purpose is to meet. I'll put those back on the screen again to multiply the church. Actually, let's say these together. M, multiply the church. E, exercise spiritual gifts. E again, encourage each other. T, train up disciple makers. This is the heart of why we're going the direction we're going. And again, my human plan, in my mind, this is for a time and this is for a season. We're going to seek God about this, but I believe we're going to be able to gather again corporately here in the future. So here's the thing. Regardless of whatever GSIS says, I believe this is where we're going. Okay? This is where we're going. And we'll continue to communicate. We're going to have places where we're going to gather for fellowship, we're going to invite you. Again, your decision to come or not, but we're going to keep moving to places where we can meet corporately to pray, to fellowship together, to, to, um, to 
devote ourselves to the apostles' teaching together, to just truly do this. And the, the government and the society's orders and their thing, that's going to go up and down. It's going to be strict. It's going to loosen. We're, we're, that's, we're going to consider those things. If we need to adapt accordingly, we, we can adapt accordingly, but we're going to continue in this direction. This is a sail that we're setting and we're moving towards. Yeah? Because we, we, we need to take these steps where the Lord is taking us. And I believe it's not just simply for our benefit. It is for the benefit and it's for the, the purpose of bringing others into the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. That's, again, why all of this is, is putting, being put into motion. So, starting today, you can go to our website, thenations.asia, and if you have it in your heart to, to open, uh, 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 to host a gathering, you can do that on our website. Go to signups, and you'll see... Uh, an item that says host a gathering. This doesn't mean that you become a leader of that gathering. This just simply means you know, you, you know of a venue. You know of a space that could be your home, that could be, again, all these other options. And I ask you to please think out of the box <laughs> in, in many ways. We're going to try to open up as many different possibilities as possible. But that's gonna, I'm gonna, that requires your help. Um, that's, we got one brain versus hundreds here. And that's going to be so helpful. So that, that basically, the sign-up sheet is going to help us determine capacity, um, total numbers, what's open, what's available, what restrictions there might be. So we have all of that available. And then we're going to post that onto our website so that people can start signing up and, and joining these gatherings officially. Timeline, we're going to give a few weeks to prepare for this. I'm thinking the end of August to the beginning of September is what's in my mind. So they have some time to understand what we're doing prepare for them, get our leaders in place of these gatherings, get the sign-ups going, get people coming. It's a little bit of adjustment, no? It's going to be a little bit of adjustment, not on a not just physical level, but I would say every, there's, there's going to be adjustments in many ways. So we're going to take some time to prepare, have the questions, talk about these, engage in those conversations, and move in this direction. So beginning today, we're going to have those sign-ups open. Please, if that's on your heart, please sign up, and we can start the, that, the preparations from here forward. Okay, I'm going to close out this message this morning, and I'm going to put up our discussion and prayer points for, for us at home to discuss, for us even here to be talking and praying through. The first one is, in light of what you heard this morning, what concerns come up in your heart? Just be honest about it. Let's be honest about the concerns that rise up in your heart. But for the purpose of praying, what, do, what concerns do we need to pray for and put before God in his presence? Okay? So be honest about those concerns, worries that you have, things that, you're, yeah, that just don't sit well with you. I've had to do them and put them, and put them as prayer places and areas and focuses of prayer, okay? So at home, if you have the chance to, you can talk about them, um, speak them out loud. Second thing is then read together Matthew chapter 36, verse 33. Let that be a word that, that founds and then and, and, and settles into your heart and then take these concerns into prayer together. Seek God to speak through his word and the spirit to these burdens that you might have. That's the best thing I could ask any person to do as we consider this in the context of where we're at right now. Okay. So what are the concerns that we need to pray for? Let's pray about them and, and read Matthew 6.33 together. I'm going to pray for us. Father, thank you for taking this time to share with us so, so clearly um, what is in your heart not, not just on the practical things that we're talking about, but really your heart for people in this world who are in, still enslaved to sin, that you want 
to rescue them. That, Father, you gave your only begotten Son because you love them, because you love us. So that through believing in you, believing in what you have done, believing in your love, that we can also have eternal life. Father, thank you for showing us and revealing to us your heart in all of this. And I pray that, Lord, you will continue to minister to us personally in the light of all that is stirring within us as we listen to your words and your truths. And, Father, we trust that you will guide us with your wisdom and, Father, with your love. And we want nothing but to honor you and be used for your glory as we worshiped you and praised you and sung today. In Jesus we pray. Amen. Amen.